Hello, sweetest potatoes. And just like that, we're at the end or the beginning of another year. Last half full, am I right? Whether you're watching this end of year, beginning of January, sometime in March, August, 2023, don't worry, we're using New Year's as a stepping stone to kickstart our journey, but we can reset our lives anytime we want. If I'm being completely honest, I need this New Year reset series very desperately myself. I had a mad dash in New York City before coming home for the holidays, and what was I mad dashing about? Well, two things, two surprises. The first thing is I documented the whole thing on my second vlog channel so that has launched the first video has gone up I'll link it down below and the second thing is I finally launched my podcast with my best friend Vivian voice hugs you can find it anywhere where you usually listen to podcasts so I came home spent my birthday by the ocean which was lovely got sick and I've been out since I have not been a reflective mood I have not wanted to do anything if you've been feeling anything like what I've been feeling I just want to let you know I feel you we're starting from the same place and I kept all of that in mind our mental capacity our willpower our capacity to reflect and everything when creating this year's challenges. Last year's How to Unpotato Your Life series had videos, there's an online community and Notion templates. This year we'll have all of that and more. I've basically taken your guys' feedback from last year's Notion templates and completely beefed it up. I just, I'm so excited for you guys to see. I'm so excited for you guys to poke around because everything from the first, to the very last worksheet, they're all linked beautifully together. You can type things into the first one that auto populate the second and third and fourth one. I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm very, very excited. So here's what you can expect. Week one, which is today, we'll be reflecting and celebrating the past with three levels of reflection questions. Week two, we'll reframe and master our mindsets for the new year. We talk about mindsets all the time. I just want to take a step back to to really break down how to even get in a good mindset so that we can do all of this planning. Week three, we'll find our values and set goals. So this is a little bit similar to last year with finding your why, but because it was quite overwhelming for a lot of people last year, we teased out what is most essential in this. So just yeah, I'm so excited. Week four, we'll turn our goals into systems for our absolute best year yet. Okay, so if you take a look at the Notion worksheets, week one, three, and four are currently already live. If you want to do them all when sitting, you totally can, or you can follow along with these videos, totally up to you. To use the Notion worksheets, duplicate the whole page. This is how you'll be able to edit and just make it your own. Quick shout out to Notion for sponsoring a couple of these videos. My love for the app shouldn't come as a surprise as it is very, very well documented. Every week I'll share how to's and behind the scenes of how I designed and created each week's template at the end of the video so without further ado let's get to reflecting and celebrating get yourself a nice beverage we're gonna spend a lot of time together this is just honey lemon water <coughs> i haven't filmed in so long this feels kind of weird when you first click into worksheet number one there's a little what to expect section so level one is what i did level two is what i learned level three is how i felt and the very end is after we do all our reflections we'll do a little let's set my intentions so just like how our energy fluctuates throughout the day our capacity to reflect can also ebb and flow you can finish level one and call it a day skip to set my intentions or just keep swimming all right so starting with level one what I did. Take some time to celebrate the big and small wins. If needed, look through your camera roll slash journal. So take a step back, reflect, acknowledge the joys and accomplishments and small wins throughout the year. No matter how amazing or how terrible of a year we had, there is always still good in it, good woven throughout it. If only we want to see the good in our suffering. Man search for meaning. Okay, three things I'm thankful for this year. It can be my health. It can be seeing my parents for the first time since lockdown, being able to spend more alone time to get to know myself, honing in on my craft, being able to hug friends again, having smaller celebrations, but still being able to celebrate together. It's really hard for me to just pick three things. So I'll, I usually put it in buckets. First thing is family, being able to spend holidays and wedding celebrations with my family, seeing everyone together for the first time. During Thanksgiving, we're at my cousin's house. My cousin's house used to be my grandparents' house. It's a house that all my cousins grew up at. We're in the backyard having a great time and all of a sudden everyone's like, oh my God, who's here? And I'm like, oh my God, who's here? Who can possibly elicit this much excitement in everyone? And it turns out to be my dad. 
My dad landed that day and he was debating whether he wanted to come or not. And it's just, that's my first time seeing my dad in two years. It's the first time all my cousins saw my dad in two years. It's the first time Jams met my dad. Ah, <sighs> seeing everyone together in the same place. Just thinking about it now, I'm like almost tearing up because <gasps> family is just, family's great. <laughs> and also being able to watch my baby cousin grow up. She's so precious. This first set of questions, when you think back to when you're the most thankful, whether it was time you spent alone, time you spent with others, time you spent doing specific things, it's a great gauge for what you should invest in more in the coming year. So three things I'm proud of this year, whether it's graduating, starting a new job, starting a creative project in 2020 and keeping with it until 2021, or even just starting any creative project, reading a book a month as you promised yourself, finally finding a skincare routine you love and stick to, or even choosing to get out of bed every day, even on mornings if you don't want to. The third thing that I'm proud of is letting go of more layers of this desire to be perfect. I've grown to become a less tense and intense person, far less uptight, far less type A and like my way or the highway. I'm able to go with the flow more. I'm able to be more adaptable. I'm able to be more flexible and even just like laugh at myself more. I think the most important thing is the dialogue in my head is far more gentle and far more kind and compassionate. I feel like sometimes we can be so hard on ourselves that we don't even take time to pat ourselves on the back and to be like, yo, you did a great job. You're fantastic. You're wonderful and you deserve everything that you have right now. Those are not the words that usually come to my mind when I think of myself, but this is a good reminder that you're awesome and that you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> the last set of questions, three things I overcame this year, whether it's myself, the negative voices in my head, another year of uncertainty, mental clarity through setting up healthier boundaries. Maybe you opened up more this year to love once old and new because you realized the importance of connection and community in 2020. The first thing that I overcame, this was the year that I faced the absolute most resistance I've ever have since I started creating videos on YouTube. As a creative person, I feel like a part of your craft is a part of your evolution. It's through the evolutions that you continue to refine your craft and your art kind of grows with you. I've kind of been at the same place for quite some time with this productivity self-care content that I genuinely still enjoy, but I feel like my interests have grown so far beyond that that it hurts me a little sometimes that this is all I talk about on this channel. Whether it's because I think these videos gets views and that's why I'm doing it, whether it's me being this person that I think you guys want me to be, no matter the reason, I just felt like I was fighting an uphill battle this year, which is why I decided to start my second channel. I can just dedicate on vlogs because I feel like a part of me, like I've been wanting to create vlogs. But I just feel like whenever I post a vlog on my current channel, it doesn't do as well as a more specific how-to video. My inkling is that you guys come to me for very specific things, which is the how-tos to be inspired to feel something. And I don't think vlogs, it doesn't hit the same. Vlogs hit a different nerve, which I think it's great. You're seeing how someone's living their life versus is being told what to do, but it's just different. I'm gonna separate the two, I'm gonna do vlogs, and it's something that I'm gonna do at least once a week for the year of 2022, so 52 vlogs at least by the end of 2022. What about my channel? This is just like a therapy session for Alina now. I wanna pivot to more commentary things. I recently watched a video on how TikTok is worse than you thought, and it actually is. Like, it truly actually is not a good app to have on your phone or to use, but just like seeing the way they broke it down, the connections to China, the creators, their intentions of creating it. I legit took notes. I watched a 30 minute video on YouTube and I took notes. I think that says a lot. <laughs> I took notes for me to continue looking into these different organizations, these different entities. And I think in that moment, I just realized like, this is actually what I want to spend my time doing. I want to spend my time learning about the world and sharing that with you guys in ways that I have done with productivity and with self-care. So if videos like that start coming. I hope you guys are ready because <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Bro, we don't like some pretty weird things. It's not really weird, it's just <laughs> the rabbit hole goes deep. That's the first thing I've overcame, which I think was a huge, it was actually a very, very big hurdle. I feel like ever since I came to this realization, before that, like my life was just All right, so that was level one of what I did now. 
moving on to level two if you are ready or you can pause the video right now just go on with your life and come back and resume when you're ready for level two or you can just skip it all together if you want everything is timestamped below you can skip to the semi intention section that's important because that's going to be auto populated into other worksheets so you want to make sure you do that so level two what I learned we often grow more than we give ourselves credit for I love this quote because it's basically you can't fail right if you failed but you learn from it then it no longer becomes failure and instead becomes a lesson learned and lived experience you can't succeed without failing we're all gonna fail at some point in our lives but if we learn from those failures they're not true failures if you're able to reframe it as a lesson learned i think this is where these series of questions can be the most powerful three lessons i learned about myself this year it could be learning you're far more resilient than you give yourself credit for it could be realizing you've operated more on a fixed rather than growth mindset and how that realization sets you on a new course of self-discovery it could be learning that you never really gave yourself permission to dream and to believe in yourself so you finally gave it a try this one's a fun one i realize when i nag james the most and when i nitpick him the most is when i should be nagging and nitpicking myself i think it's so easy to look at someone and pick out their flaws which is why it comes far more naturally than actually taking a step back looking at yourself and being like okay what are some areas where i can improve so when i do catch myself nitpicking and this actually happens quite often i take a step back i reflect on what i'm currently unhappy about with myself and what it is that i'm projecting onto james James, and then I apologize and then I try to work through the thing that I'm unhappy with myself about and move towards ways that I can change myself versus try to change someone else so yeah I mean I just feel like this is truth so much truth the next set of questions is three lessons I learned about others this year maybe you learned that there are seasonalities and friendships or that you cannot control your loved one's fates and that everyone has to go through their own life journey to learn the lessons they need to learn firsthand maybe it's how to support your friends in the way they need for example loving them based off of their love language maybe you learned everyone has their own biases and ways of viewing the world so maybe just maybe you shouldn't take what other people say or do as personally as you used to all right so the first thing that i learned about others is how to communicate more effectively more specifically james really helped me understand the difference between setting agreements versus expectations this year so agreements are when two people come together to communicate this is what we're going to agree on and basically sign a little verbal contract it doesn't need to be that serious but it's just two people both know this is what each person expects because expectation is just something in your own head that's not communicated which is very different from an agreement which you communicate your expectations you work through through what you guys both want maybe make some compromises if someone doesn't do what they say they're gonna do they can be like hey we talked about this remember this is what we're saying we're gonna do at this time blah 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 when i learned that i was actually pretty mind blown for most of my life i had these crazy outrageous standards and expectations for myself and for my friends that are never communicated which is why i was always disappointed i would take that out on my friends and be like oh my friends suck i don't have any friends when in reality it's just i wasn't doing a good job of communicating my needs so whether it is in relationships whether it is in friendships whether it is in teammate work environments so long as they're there's more than one person involved this is something that you can definitely try it's made all the difference it truly has made all the difference the last set of questions for this section is three lessons i learned about life this year because this one is so personal i won't give any specific examples the main lesson that i learned this year i remember hearing this quote from tony robbins from his documentary that we severely overestimate how much we can get done in one year and we severely underestimate how much we can get done in 10 years right before turning 30 i scripted a video for the 10 lessons i learned in my 20s one main thing that became so apparent now that i've lived through this very imperative decade of my life is that we do have insane expectations for ourselves every year but when you zoom out and look at your timeline like a decade who i was when i was 20 i don't even think she had a clear idea of who she wanted to be at 30 and i'm pretty sure if my 20 year old self met my 30 year old self she'd just like she'd be like what <laughs> that's possible <laughs> 
You're who? <laughs> You're done what? <laughs> I'm nobody. Knowing this is helping me be even more gentle and kind to myself in that you don't need to change the world in one year. You don't need to change yourself fully in one year. So long as you're putting in the effort to be and to do better over time, you will eventually be led where you were always meant to go. It's just honestly such a reassuring thought. Now that we're at the end of level two, if you're feeling up for it, let's continue the video. If you're feeling like you're a fried potato and you just want to take some time and do something else and come back to this, pause this video and come back. Or you can skip, again, down here, skip to set my intentions and just wrap it up. Call this video a day. We reflected, we reframed some lessons learned. Now it's time to dig deep. If what you did was your body physically, where you were, what you're doing, and what I learned is your mind. How I felt is your soul. So how were you really? Remember, there's no right or wrong way to feel. All feelings are valid. What feelings did I feel? Were there any reoccurring patterns? This is a great opportunity to dig deeper in that there's a feelings wheel. Just really getting to the how did I really feel? How did Rowena really feel? Rowena felt, Rowena didn't feel much. I think Rowena didn't let herself feel that much. I was kind of lost. I was kind of disappointed in myself and the decisions that I was making. Not that I did anything crazy, just little lifestyle habit decisions, not meditating as much, not reading as much. Another thing is we specifically wanted positive in there too, because I think it's very easy for our minds to naturally gravitate towards the negative, which is what my mind automatically went to. The positives, I felt much lighter. I felt free. I felt alive. Yeah, the people around me definitely made me feel very loved, very welcomed, very supported. Did I allow myself to lean into these feelings? Why or why not? I felt like most of this year, I was quite disconnected. Maybe Gus could tell. Maybe because I wasn't ready. Maybe because I had to go through what I went through this year so that I can come out the other side as a beautiful butterfly. Which of these feelings would you like to let go of and which would I like to take with you into the new year? All the external stuff that I said earlier was amazing. Feeling loved, supported, welcomed. What would I like to let go of? I think I'd like to let go of the desire to protect myself, which leads me to numb myself or to not feel. Now that we went through all the three levels, this was how my year went. These were the lessons I learned. These were the feelings I felt. Here's what I want to take into the new year and here's what I want to let go of. Take a moment and think of three words you want to embody in the new year. For example, healthy, grateful, fulfilled, at peace, confident, bold, safe, compassionate, thoughtful. Any word under the sun, what are three words you want to embody in 2022? Pause the video. Ruin is gonna pause her brain because she has no idea what the three words are yet. I definitely want to be, I wanna be connected in all the ways, but more specifically, spiritually. I want to do the things I know I need to do. I wanna be disciplined. Yeah, I think that's a good one. I wanna be connected, disciplined, free. I want to be free. Connected, disciplined, and free. So guys, we finished the first worksheet. Congratulations, how do you feel? How do you feel about your three words? Take your time, you can go off and do things as you're washing your dishes or as you're spending time with family or playing board games. A word might just pop up. So don't feel the pressure that you need to nail it right now. If you want to continue, by all means, you can continue the worksheets. If not, the video will drop in about five days about reframing and mastering your mindset. And if you guys want to connect with like-minded potatoes, or just like-minded people who do care about personal development productivity, self-care, being better versions of themselves. If one of your goals this year is to make more friends, is to join a community, you can check out the Productive Potato Family in Viably. I'll leave the link down below. We'll have challenges that accompany these prompts. We will have meetups. We can do these prompts together. We will have a good 
time. We'll have a great time. So check that out below if you guys haven't already. And thank you so much again to Notion for sponsoring this video. If you guys are interested in how I designed today's template, stick around. We'll get right into it. I feel like I look like a crane opa right now. Let me, uh, I don't know, does that look better? Okay, so on the left, we have the reflect and celebrate the past. Let's just open it as a full page. You can add a cover. What I usually do is go to unsplash. I'll do clouds. I believe I use this one. Just gonna build it from the top to the bottom so you guys can see what to expect. Background color slash table of contents right here. Advanced blocks, level one. What I did, tap the six dots turn into another heading. Next, we wanna create this little call out, slash call out. This is where you can change the little icon to be whatever you want it to be. For you to create columns, you drag the six dots aside. And then if you wanna nest that under, you can drag all the way and then just bloop. There we go. To create the rest of this, type, 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 add a divider, three things, do a bullet, Boom, boom, add a little spacing in between. Okay, so all of this is looking the same. Add another call out here. And next we're gonna create this set my intention. Turn this into a header. I believe this is a tree. A tree. Add a table and we're gonna choose an inline database. Want to be word one, word two. We can go back and create this little jump where when you click skip to set my intentions, it jumps down there automatically. You click the six dots, copy link to block. And then you go back up here, set my intentions. You hyperlink it, control V so that now if I da 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 da, finish the extension, okay, I'm done. I'm gonna skip and then it jumps down here. Great! And the very last thing is one last call out. We link it to the next worksheet. So if it's already set, add the plus sign, find my values and you just link that. So that when you click into this, it automatically takes you to the second worksheet. Those of you guys who love Notion, I feel like this can give you a little context and behind the scenes, all the levels and all the sets of questions were designed with love and were very intentional in the way that it flowed. So I hope you guys had a great time watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. It's getting so cold. Hug, hug. See you guys later.